welcome to the Wannabe Wargamers podcast. I'm James and we're joined by Scott and Ben. Hello. Hello. So today we're going to discuss all things chaos as the new Death Guard Codex is nearly here. Yay. As well, we're going to focus on Necromunda as Games Workshop have just announced a 2020 roadmap. 2021 roadmap. Shit. No years. It feels like it's going to be 2020 next year after the pandemic, to be honest. Okay, chaos. How do you guys feel about them in ninth edition? Um, I mean, the games are like done with chaos now. Though, a few games um, feels all right. I just can't wait for the two wounds. I'm still waiting for. I'm, I'm just excited for you know this new Warzone book. What's it called? Car- yeah, Warzone Caradon. Caradon, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting that the the leaks of the new uh, Death Guard Demon engines. All seem to have three plus ballistic skill and weapon skill. Oh, do they? So, oh, is it ballistic skill and weapon skill? Yeah. So, demon engines. I I imagine they'll roll that out everywhere across chaos. Okay. For demon engines, which is pretty pretty good, pretty interesting. That Death Guard terrain looks cool as well. Oh yeah. So they've they've given the so that had that now has the rule that was on the um. Blight haulers has been given to that, so that means the blight haulers don't have that anymore. Oh, is that what you think? I imagine, I imagine so. Yeah, it's got better rules on it because it says it counts as light cover, and then if they already get the benefit of light cover, then they get subtract one from hit rolls to target them. Isn't that what the blight haulers did anyway? Well, they gave them the light cover, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, it was benefits of. Yeah. So they've that means that they've lost that um that ability and they've also will have lost the ability that means if you take them in squads of three they get three plus to to hit. I don't know though, because like Games Workshop and Terrain have always you do write a rule for terrain and I don't think it through properly. So Yeah. <laughs> you probably will forget to take it off the blight haulers and it's just like, well, What's the point of taking these if the blight haulers have it? Yeah, true, because then they're, they're the moving version, aren't they? I think the the reason I think the reason they want the blight haulers to be used in smaller games and you can take one or two because at the minute it's stupid to take one or two because you get ballistic skill three plus in squads of three. So why would you ever take one or two? It's just it's stupid. Yeah. But now um I think with this change, you'd probably have them in smaller games or have like one or two just going off on their own. Yeah, I've I've always thought they were pretty sick anyway. They are good. Do an absolute menace. I've played against games against them. And I remember like spending ages to try and get close to them just to fight them. And yeah. by the time I got close into melee or like my kill range, like I finally finally whittled one down to be killed, and then it would cause more wounds back to the units that I've that I've been shooting them. Yeah, I mean, sure, mortals wounds it wounds the others in its squad, but it's worth it, really. Like killing the squad, the units that are killing that. Yeah, that's true. But I'm excited to see what with this new ballistic skill and weapon skill for those. I hope that it means that the demon engines get that. I I imagine it. I imagine it would, because why would they just give it to Death Guard? Because the the blight the bloat drone, sorry, not the blight drone, bloat drone that seems to have it as well. Ballistic skill three plus, weapon skill three plus, and the heavy blight launcher seems to be like a pretty viable option now. I never, I never thought it was terrible, but competitively, people did not rate that at all. Oh, they always took the spitters, but what makes it better than the spitters is it's two damage in it. Yeah, yeah, they made it. It was D3 damage, now it's 2 damage, which is, is way better. Plus, now you've got that Ballistic Skill 3, you know, you're hitting with 50% more shots, so... Yeah, I've always loved those models. They're, yeah, I've always, lo- I've always loved the models with the, the blight, heavy blight launchers on. I think it just looks amazing with the little tank next to the, next to the gun. Blow mower weapon as well, that looks, always looks sick on it. Yeah, yeah. So now it seems like... All versions of that, all the three weapon versions for that are actually viable now, which is good. When before it was, it was kind of like, oh, it's you never really take the heavy light launcher because of the ballistic skill. Yeah, you, you always took the auto hit weapon. That was pretty much all you take. Yeah, and it could fly away and still auto hit. I still think the spitters are competitively better, but 
the blight launches, the range on them is like 36 inches as well. Have they talked much about like what demon engine crossovers you might be getting? No. For the new codex. I don't think they've done many previews yet, have they? I would like to see certain Chaos Space Marine units being available for Death Guard. Yeah, definitely. I would, I would love Venom Crawlers um, in my list. I think they're really strong. Would you have Mauler Fiends? Yeah, I'd try Mauler Fiends. I'd try Forge Fiends. Because um, they just fit with it. I've seen so many sick conversions of Mauler Fiends and Forge Fiends. Just putting on the, the, um, the drone's heads on it. It just makes them look like Death Guard straight off the bat. Yeah. And the Venom Crawler as well, on its own, looks really Death Guard anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, the the, um, the Death Guard tank, I forget the name of the tank, what's the tank Which called? Which one? The Mortal one? The Plague Burst Crawler. Plague Burst Crawler, yeah. Yeah, that guy. I think that could fit in with most Chaos Space Marine Legions. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> Imagine that with three plus ballistic skill. Like, you've, been, you've been doing damage with them. All three of them with just four plus ballistic skill re-rolling once. Yeah. Yeah, I've been using I've been using them quite well with four plus, but now that if they're getting three plus, I might not have to run a lord to babysit them. Well, you probably can't anyway. It probably um, will be core only, and they won't be core ever. That's true, but I imagine the um, warlord trait arch contaminator. Yeah. Is not going to go to core. I imagine that's going to be still benefit um, everything that has plague weapons. I feel that the. I feel that obliterators should be for Death Guard as well because they just look like a Death Guard unit. Yeah, I'd love to say the obliterators are really strong as well. Yeah. Well, they are, but they weren't for Ben the other time, were they? <laughs> no, that's true. But Ben, Ben, you had a game like the other day, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I used them against uh, Imperial Guard tanks, and those Guard tanks are tough as eight. Yeah. There's a stratagem for Iron Warriors where you can just re-roll the weapon stats. Really? And I just got strength nine. AP minus um, two. If you might, it was strength nine. AP minus three. Two damage they were doing, and that, that was eighteen shots. If you're taking obliterators, how many do you think you need? They're good for multiple jobs, believe it or not. I know they're very expensive. You can take one on it. I think you can take one on its own now. Are they in squads of three, or are they classed as separate things? Uh, if you take them in a squad of three, they're actually a squad of three. Um, but you can have it on its own, which can be really good for stealing an objective. Yeah, because they can teleport as well. They're slow, and, but they're durable. I'm thinking of getting some, but like, I mean, you only get two, don't you? And they they haven't released them yet as their own kit. You've got to get the start collecting. I've got five ready to build, you know. <laughs> you've got five? You've got five? Yeah, I've got five unbuilt ones. And you've seen me, I've already got... What? I've mean, I got I've got three for my Iron Warriors. I think did I have two or one for my um the Purge army? <laughs> so I've to- in total I've got nine obliterators. Oh my god. As well, though, like not just for chaos, but I, I see this for a lot of forces. Um, I can see them doing a terrain piece for every army now. Yeah. I mean I called it before the Death Guard one came out and turns out you know, and took a lucky guess. But I can because they've done one for Space Marines, done one for Necrons, now they're done one for Death Guard. Yeah. Like, I'm sure, because they're trying to push terrain. The problem is, though, some, some of the terrain is, like, questionable at, at points. Like, sometimes the rules aren't good enough, or it's too costly for what it, for what it does. Um, yeah. Like, I think the Orcs have a mech shop, and that can do something really good with your weapons on your vehicles. The only problem with it is you have to sacrifice your vehicle doing anything to do it. It doesn't really make it worth it. Like, you may as well shoot the vehicle twice rather than stop shooting just to get an extra AP or something. Oh, really? Yeah. It confuses me that the are selling terrain with, like, rules because they could sell terrain just literally as, you know, just general terrain and have terrain rules rather than like army specific rules oh yeah fortification yeah because like it they look so good that sometimes i'm like oh these this necron one the little the little three pillars like loads of them on a battlefield would just look mint but i don't necessarily want to use the rules for them i just want them to look cool yeah for a nice terrain piece yeah just nice terrain pieces exactly yeah 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 well, that's why, why I bought the Eldar one, isn't it? Because I thought it looked, it looked cool. Yeah, the trees, yeah. Yeah, I think I think some of those should, like, 
I'm surprised they haven't pushed more a theme board. Yeah. Like they, like you're saying, they're, they're pushing themed fortifications for armies and pretty much every army's got one now. But I don't see them ever pushing, right, but do you want to do, like... You know the um, city boards you can do now with the modular terrain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They haven't gone, here's a forest world. Here's a... Demon world or something. Like a, a, a monastery, fortified, really heavy fortified city kind of terrain piece. Yeah. Do you know what's actually really good value, though, in my opinion? In my opinion I mean, um, the Necromunda tiles, like, it's 40 quid, and I thought, that's quite a lot for what? for a tile but when I saw the box you actually get four I think four pieces of the tile so for 40 quid so it's 10 pieces 10 quid a tile I thought that wasn't actually half bad and if you buy it from other places like Element for example you can get it cheap I think maybe so question right question 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 were you surprised that they announced it for Death Guard it being a codex rather than a supplement See, the thing is, it makes sense for me because it has unique stuff. I could see them kind of pushing codexes just for the specific gods. But when they do the Chaos Space Marine Codex, they start releasing supplements for your certain legions like Iron Warriors, Flat Legion, yeah. Word Bearers. Yeah. Quite a bit different because Death Guard, all their units, most of their stuff is completely separate where... Whereas a Space Marine supplement, you could have all the same units as a normal Space Marine Codex army. You couldn't really do that with a Death Guard, if you know what I mean. I think with Death Guard, though, they need to like maybe fix their characters in some regard, because by goodness, you've got loads of characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe like I don't know, have a unit of three of them or something instead of just. Then again, though, that means people have to buy, start buying them individually just to make a squad. Yeah. You mean like the elites? Yeah, yeah. You get, your elite slot is cramped. It, it might get overhauled, really. Yeah, it's very cramped. Very cramped. I, I, won't, I won't be surprised if they make maybe one. Oh, if, if they do, though, actually, then that causes problems. If you made one of them a troop just because he's a troop booster, then you're going to have people buying that one and just cramming the troop towards the air. That is an issue. You could have it like a. Um, like an unlisted unit, but it has to be like, oh, you need one troop, one troops in order to take, like the plague surgeon. It's like, oh, you you have to take one troop in order to take one plague surgeon, something like that. Right. As well, do you think that they'll do an FAQ when this Death Guard Codex is out? Because Death Guard's Codex is going to come out with two wounds on all their Marines, and then obviously Chaos Space Marines will still have one. Yeah, that that would be a weird situation because it'll be Death Guard, um, Plague Marines in one codex will have something, and Plague Marines in another codex will be slightly different and different points. So with the Space Marine codex, when that did come out, obviously you got the FAQ for Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and Dark Angels, and it just made it all seem to flow really nicely. Yeah. But at the same time, I was thinking, I'm surprised they've not just done this for Chaos yet. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because playing against Chaos armies where they've got one wound models is just, like, weird. Yeah. And I just feel it's so unbalanced now. Like, Space Marines in general, you can take so many different kind of armies with Space Marines now. Whereas with Chaos, you kind of shoehorned into kind of certain areas because as well like we've just discussed some of the stuff you can't take for certain chaos space marine armies like you can't take for death guard a venom crawler yeah yeah um but you can take your demon engines yeah and then iron warriors have to take mauler fiends versus they can't take those big um plague burst crawlers now yeah imagine the death guard so the death guard codex comes out and then you have a game against like black legion or something so your Plague Marines would have two wounds, be more points, and, and the Black Legion player might bring Plague Marines, and his Plague Marines would have one wound and less points, but it'd be the same models and the same unit. For that reason, it does make sense for them to FAQ all the um, Chaos Marines up to two wounds, but I don't know if they'll do it. I hope they do something like they did with... Uh, gas and like shadow somewhere you can actually take these units in other people's armies just maybe not 
benefit from the Legion train. Yeah. Like Gaz, if you take him in anything other than goths, um, he doesn't benefit from his goths trait, but he also doesn't benefit from the other traits. That, you know, like say he was taking an evil son's attack, detac- he just doesn't gain the evil son's rules, but he doesn't also gain his goths rules. Not like that much of a loss if he's taken with evil sons or something. And Shadow Sun as well, but she's fair, you know, the, the Tau. She's taken in any other detachment, she just loses her word, you know, her keyword, but still be usable. Could you see that for a badin? Maybe, yeah, I could see that for a Like, they seem to be. Do- well, I, I think they will do it for a badin because they've done it for. Um, unless they make a new Supreme Commander or something. But most of the Supreme Commanders they've made now seem to. I know there's not many. What I think there's two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd just like to see next year a couple of units for Chaos in general, like across the board for Chaos Space Marines, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, and obviously the Core Book. That just kind of balances it against Space Marines and all the stuff they have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the options they have. Oh yeah, the options. Because. The options are great for Space Marines, but I want to play more Chaos. I don't want to play all the new Space Marine toys, really. I also want to see more bloody Primarchs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time now, hasn't it? What, two two years? Nearly three years? It feels like a long time. We've, just got, we've only just got the taste for Primarchs. Give us more Primarchs. I know. I was hoping for the Lion with the Dark Angel supplement. Yeah. But it, what they said last weekend with the live stream, on the live stream, it didn't sound like they had anything really coming for Dark Angels. It just sounds like the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of the um, yeah, artwork for that Blood Angels stuff? The actual Blood Angels supplement looks beautiful. Like The artwork looks amazing. And I like the look of some of the new successor chapters that they're doing. They've got completely different colour schemes that aren't red at all. Oh, uh, uh, really? Like, like new ones? Yeah. They've got this turquoise one. And they've got this sort of bone white one. I think I think it was bone white, but the turquoise one looked really nice. So they're probably Primaris only sort of chapters, but I, I like the look of it. That's cool. That's cool. And I heard of, I heard about the dice. Yeah, didn't the dice sell out in like two seconds or two minutes? I heard. Did they? <laughs> it's ridiculous that. I wasn't too bothered about the dice to be honest. Dice look nice though. The dice are quite, yeah, they're one of the better ones. They're one of the ones that look good, but also are practical. Yeah, they actually were the practical ones. For Games Workshop dice, that's actually quite rare. <laughs> yeah. Usually they just go over go for style first, and then it's like, oh yeah, they're supposed to be dice, they're supposed to tell people information. The dice are just more built for more casual games, aren't they? Like, remember the Luminesque dice? I loved, I loved them, though. Yeah, they were beautiful, but I mean, would you use them? They just... <laughs> I know, they were, it's, they're not square. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I find those Nurgle dice hard, you know. Oh, yeah. They make me work. Yeah. I have got used to them, though, I'll be honest. I haven't got used to them. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not suitable for bat reps, though. No, not not suitable for bat reps. I was looking at it like, what the hell is that? Yeah. I played a game against them once, and about halfway through, I was like, I ain't going to be able to work this out, so I'm just going <laughs> to say whatever he's saying he's rolled. Fine. <laughs> yeah. You just got to trust the Death Guard player. Yeah. Like, imagine coming across those in a tournament. I'd just be like, aha, oh, today is not my day. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you remember when I had them corn dice ages ago? Oh, yeah. The ones in the little corn tub. Like, it was like a cylinder, wasn't oh, it? Oh, they were really good, actually. I do remember those. They were really good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, Necromunda, let's get stuck into 2021. Not 2020. Yes. Tell me all about what Necromunda will be like next year. Yeah, I mean, like, we all play it. <laughs> I play the video game. I have models. I, do, I actually have some models. Have you both got a gang now? I don't have a gang I'm, yet. I've been, like, building up my gang every time. I remember, um... I <laughs> just listened to this story. <laughs> I went to camps with Jordan to play a game, right? And then I realised, oh, you know, I need to build up my force. I, you know, I still not built everything. So I started building out of that, you know, the, the newer Escher gang box. So I built a, I built a Death Maiden, and they were waiting for me to build it so we could play. And then I realised I didn't even bring my army with me. So I just spent all this time building a Death Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even bring my force with me. Oh my god. So I just kept on waiting the whole time. So are you getting a gang, Scott? 
I am. I was going to get Delac, which are one of the ones in the roadmap that are getting uh, more models and a book soon. Um, so, yes. I was going to switch to Orlock just because they got the dogs and the um, the guys with like the hammers and the jetpack guys. Um, and then Delac all looked the same, and I was like, oh, I want a bit of variation, so I'll go Orlock. But I think I'm going to stick with Delac now because they will get... Yeah. The court in the third quarter of next year, they're going to get, you know, new stuff. It should be nice. And wasn't one, what a, isn't one of them like a spider thing, or a psyche? Wasn't one a spider oh, thing? Oh, the psyche, the yeah, yeah. So they they have psychers that, and that'd be cool. Didn't they have like robot, like little robot spiders or something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that little pets are like these little tiny little skulls, yeah, with, like spider legs. Can't remember exactly what it is. Yeah, so that that'd be cool. That's good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with them. I think. I was looking at Vansar, and then they did announce some new Vansar models um, on the live stream, didn't they? That looked really yeah, good. Yeah, last last week. Yeah. Uh, so those new models, I'm like, wow, that looks sick, and I like the kind of they've got that kind of uh, Splinter Cell look for 40k. Yeah. You remember that game? Oh, Splinter Cell, yeah. Um. But then after speaking to Ben today and the amount of convincing he's been giving me over the past week about getting uh, Underworlds for Sigma, I think uh, I'm going to spend my money on that. <laughs> that one it doesn't seem like a big commitment. You just need to get one force and boom, you're done. Yeah. And it's, it seems like that's, that's what appeals to me about it, is it? Easy pick up and I play. do like the idea of Necromunda, but I don't want to get a gang and then start getting excess models as well. I kind of just want to buy one kit. And I think with Underworlds, like looking at the stuff for Underworlds today, I was a bit like, actually, you could buy one kit for this, get some cards, and you're kind of set for a bit. Yeah. Would, would that, could you not say that about Warcry as well, though? It's not just one War, kit. Warcry is more Necromunda. Like Necromunda then. Yeah. It's more like Kill Team. Right, okay. Is Underworlds more like Kill Team? No, Underworlds is like its own complete little mini game. Yeah. It's like cards, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you have a deck, just tile-based fighting. So just more on this roadmap. Yeah. Is there anything there that you just want to quickly go over? Well, you've got, you've got the core dog and um, the Delac. So they're getting the two upgrades, and the fourth one is, is uh, hidden. But then there's also some artwork of the Nautican gang, which is like the... They kind of look like Admech, but like water themed and underwater themed. They look really cool. The water's gold in it, uh, and the artwork looks amazing. Yeah, and um, the artwork for them looks really, really cool. They got like tanks on the back, and they look kind of Asian inspired type look to them. They look like very trader esque as well. Yeah, trader esque like Admech, Taui, water like Bioshock type things going they on. Look like everything, everything good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they will they yeah they look mint i mean if they if they look half as good as this artwork then oh yeah i'd probably get into that gw always smash out their model making they always give us good models i'd say yeah definitely yeah we've seen some of that already haven't we the um the special characters the core dog one looks really cool just got like a massive like candles on his back and a massive like boomstick type thing cool good so, closing off then, have you got an update for us, Scott, on current content that's coming out in the future? Yes. So, obviously, like, the UK lockdown has messed us up a little bit. So, the plan is, for the next games, going to be uh, Space Wars against Orcs, Tau against Ultramarines, and Necrons versus Eandin, and the and we should probably do a death guard game and a blood angels game yeah i think death guard versus blood angels would be pretty good with the new the new rules for them both actually i just want to throw in as well like me and cam have been talking i'd like to do orcs versus far sight as well that'd be good i think i think those five are, are december january 
to be honest. Plus, it's my house, so what I say goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably December, January, February, March, April at R8 with lockdowns. <laughs> <laughs> I think five, five in two months is what I want to aim for because one of them is actually quite a small game. I think we should film them and then lock you in an isolation booth for about four days, Scott. If I have everything I need, I, I can do them quite fast. Good. Well, good to chat again, guys. And I look forward to seeing these bat reps. Look forward to seeing you two as well. Don't, don't look forward to all the painting I'm probably going to need to do. I oh, me with my hawks. Yeah. I need to do a lot. Do you know what? Like, the lockdown is tough in general, but it will be good when we can actually, you know, 40k again. Yeah, definitely. Okay, catch you later, guys. See you later. Yep. Nice one. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.